What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the first half of June 2020 and I let you know what I think about each one of these drops and whether I think each shoe is going to sit on shelves or sell out online because we still can't really go to stores. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at Real Seth Fowler. I'm sure you've noticed that over the last couple months sneaker releases have been slower than usual and that's obviously because of the pandemic going on but it does look like things are finally turning around and June looks like a pretty solid month. It might not be as crazy as the end of May was with the Chunky Dunkies and the Flints and the Travis Scotts and all those crazy releases but it is a pretty solid start to a month. As usual I like to start these videos off by saying you should only buy a sneaker because you like it or because you want to wear it and not because your friends or some random dude on the internet told you to. But at this point, why don't we jump right into the fun stuff and start talking about the June sneaker releases. Starting things off on June 1st, we've got the Nike Air Trainer 3 Biotech. First released in 1988, this Air Trainer is making a comeback in a really interesting purple, yellow, and gray colorway. It's definitely got a very interesting sort of retro futuristic vibe, which I'm actually kind of into, and I think in this colorway, it's pretty decent. The pinks and the purples on the upper are contrasted pretty nicely by the bright yellow Nike swoosh and midsole, and I think overall, it's definitely a clean look. That said, I don't know how many people are actually excited about this sneaker, and even though I think it's a good release, I don't think it's that hyped up, and so for that reason, I think this shoe is probably going to sit. Moving on to June 5th, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 Graffiti. This shoe is obviously inspired by the LeBron 4 Graffiti, and what's interesting is that if you look at the shoe, you can actually see that not only did they incorporate just the colorway, but they also incorporated some of the paneling and lines of that shoe as well. I gotta be honest, I'm actually kinda into this retro LeBron 17 vibe that's going on, and I think it's a pretty decent look and possibly one of my favorite LeBron 17s to drop. I think if you love LeBron or love his sneakers, this sort of redo of the LeBron 4 Graffiti is for you. However, I don't know how many people really want a pair of LeBron 4s on their LeBron 17s, so for that reason, I don't know if the shoe is going to sell. I think it actually might sit on shelves. Also dropping on the 5th, we've got the Nike KD13 in the bread colorway. As you could probably tell from the name, the shoe comes in a black and red colorway, and to be honest, it looks a lot like the Air Jordan 11 breads. And I actually kind of like that about it, I think it's a nice looking shoe overall. But most likely, it will be a GR release, and because of that, I think this shoe is going to sit. And then rounding off June 5th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 hair. According to the Nike Sneakers app, this shoe is technically called the Air Jordan 6 Neutral Gray, but we all know it's the Air Jordan 6 hair. There's no reason to rename it. This colorway is very heavily inspired by the Air Jordan 7 hair, but I've got to say that it actually looks pretty decent on the Air Jordan 6. Well, I guess it is kind of just a white, gray, and red colorway, so it probably would look good on a lot of sneakers. I'm assuming the shoe is releasing to start hyping up Space Jam 2, or as it's actually called, Space Jam A New Legacy, and I've got to say, it's a pretty decent marketing tool. It's a decent looking shoe shoe and I know a lot of people who really like the Air Jordan 7 hairs are probably going to be into the Air Jordan 6 hairs and because of that I think there's a good chance that this shoe could sell out. Moving on to June 6th, we've got the Adidas Dame 6 Leather. This black and gold Dame 6 is apparently a luxury remake of the Dame 6 with leathers and suede. Personally, I don't think the Dame 6 is that good looking of a sneaker, so I don't feel like I need a more premium version of the shoe, but hey, maybe there's some people out there who really love the Dame 6 and would like a premium version. I don't know who they are, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. The black and gold colorway does seem like a nice touch, and from the one picture that I have of the shoe, it looks like the leather is decent quality, but it's not enough to make me run out and buy the shoe, and I don't think anyone else is really that excited about the shoe, so because of that, I think the shoe is going to sit. Next up, we've got the Jordan Delta SP in black. The Jordan Delta SP is a low top lifestyle sneaker from Jordan brand that features a full length react midsole. The shoe doesn't look bad and it's actually pretty comfortable on feet, but it's nothing too exciting. And out of all the colorways that have dropped so far, this black colorway is probably the most boring. It's not a bad shoe if you're looking for like a decent everyday shoe, this is probably not a bad way to go, but I just don't see this shoe selling out. And then the last shoe releasing on June 6th, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Animal Instinct 2.0. I don't like the shoe as much as the first one. And granted, I don't like fur on sneakers, but the colorway of that shoe was just a little bit better than this colorway. If you don't know what the Animal Instinct collection or pack is, it's basically a set of Air Jordan 3s that are covered in animal skins, furs, I don't know, like synthetic just animal bits, I guess. I mean, to be fair, leather is cow skin, so I guess it's not that different, but uh, they decided to use more exotic synthetics, is what it seems like, like croc skin. It's obviously not real croc skin, but it looks like croc skin. The first Animal Instinct 3 didn't sell out, or if it did, it didn't sell out right away, and I think this shoe will be pretty similar because I don't think there's as much hype behind it as there would be for just a standard pair of Air Jordan 3s. I like that they kind of kept the colorway similar to a pair of Black Cement 3s. I think that was the right way to go. I'm not a huge fan of the yellow heel tab or the green accents, but 
It's not a terrible colorway overall, I just don't love the crazy skins that they used. However, that's just my own personal preference. I don't hate the shoe, but I don't love it. You might really love this shoe, and that's totally fine. This is another one of those shoes that I wouldn't be surprised either way, whether it sat or whether it sold, because it's such a weird Air Jordan 3. However, I do think people will like this version of the shoe better than the last version, because I think less people like furry shoes, and this shoe isn't furry, at least to my knowledge. So because of that, I guess I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. Then on June 8th, we've got the Adidas 4D Run 1.0. I hate to say it, but this is like the most boring 4D sneaker that's dropped so far. There's nothing against it. It's not a bad shoe. I still think 3D printed midsoles are awesome and the future, but this shoe is just not it for me. The 4D Run 1.0 comes in a basic white upper with orange three stripes on the side and sort of a light teal colored heel counter. And overall, it's just a cheaper upper on a pair of 40s. That's that's about it. If you don't have a pair of 40s and you really want a pair of 40s, this is probably one of the easiest pairs to get because no one's really gonna want it and the price point is 200 bucks. But uh, I just don't think it's that exciting and I think you can probably find other pairs of 40s on sale. And so because of that, I think the shoe is gonna sit. However, finishing off the eighth, we've got two Boost sneakers that I'm incredibly excited for, and those shoes are the Adidas Parlay Ultra Boost DNAs. This shoe is releasing in both a white and black colorway, and of course the shoe features a full-length Ultra Boost Boost midsole. Now, if you don't know what Parlay is, Parlay is an organization that's trying to clean up the plastics in our oceans. Adidas is using some of those recycled plastics in the upper of some of their shoes, and I think it gives those sneakers a really cool look. But the reason I think people will be so excited about this sneaker is that it looks just like an ultra-limited pair of Ultra Boosts that released back in 2017. In fact, that's probably why I'm gonna pick up this shoe for myself because it reminds me so much of that super limited pair and I still love the way it looks, so I think it's worth picking up. I don't know how limited this shoe is gonna be, but based on what I've been hearing, it's on a lot of people's radar and so because of that, I think both colorways might actually sell out. Continuing on to June 11th, we've got three different versions of Nike's all-new Space Hippie. The shoes are very creatively named Space Hippie 01, Space Hippie 02, and Space Hippie 03. I'm not making that up, that's literally what they're named on the sneakers app. I feel like they could have come up with any name and it would have been better than that. Interestingly enough, these shoes are Nike's newest take on sustainability and similar to the Parley collab we just talked about, this shoe is made up of almost 50% recycled materials. I also don't think it's a coincidence that these shoes are releasing a day apart. According to the sneakers app, 50% of the weight of each one of these shoes is made up of recycled materials. I'm not exactly sure why they said 50% of the weight of the shoe is created by recycled materials, maybe because 50% of the actual shoe is not not created by recycled materials and it just sounded better for marketing. In fact, pretty sure that's probably what it was. But overall, it's still a cool concept and I think each one of these shoes looks pretty interesting. The Space Hippie 1 is a pretty basic low top sneaker. It's got a gray knit upper with an orange Nike swoosh and this interesting, probably recycled midsole that comes in a light blue. It has a very similar vibe to a pair of Epic Reacts and because of that, I think a lot of people will be drawn to this sneaker. The Space Hippie 2 is a similar shoe to the Space Hippie 1 in that it's a low top and it comes in a very similar colorway. However, unlike the Space Hippie 1, it's laceless. So if you're more into knit slip-on sneakers, this might be a good way to go. And then finally, the Space Hippie 3 is the crazy one. This is the high top with all sorts of craziness going on in the upper, and I think this one's my favorite. It seems to have some sort of pull lacing system, which is pretty similar to what we had on the Air Jordan 33s, and while I don't think that's the best way to lace a shoe, I think it makes this sneaker look dope. Colorway-wise, this shoe is very similar to the other Space Hippies, where ability-wise, I think this shoe is gonna be a little bit harder to wear than the other Space Hippies, but design-wise, it's the most exciting. And that's why I want it the most. I am definitely gonna be trying to pick up a pair of any one of these sneakers for myself, whichever one I can get my hands on. And if anyone at Nike is watching, if you guys wanna send me a pair to review early, that would be sick. I think this is a really cool initiative. But regardless, I think this is a really exciting new collection of sneakers. I think a lot of people are hyped on them. I think Nike is also gonna hype the crap out of them. And because of that, I think all three of these sneakers are going to sell out. And then rounding off June 11th, we've got the women's Air Jordan 1 High in tie-dye. This blue tie-dye Air Jordan 1 High is a pretty good looking sneaker and I think it's unfortunate that it's only coming in women's sizes. Tie-dye is still so big right now and I feel like if this shoe had released in all sizes, it would have sold out instantly. Unfortunately, because it is only coming in women's sizes, I think it's only gonna go up to a size 10 and a half in men's. There won't be as wide of an audience for it, but I still think it's a great looking sneaker. It's a unique take on an Air Jordan 1. I think it's different. I like the colorway. I think a lot of people are gonna be stoked on it. So because of that, I think this shoe is gonna sell. 
So actually, just as I was recording this just now, Nike decided to add the Space Hippie 4 to the sneakers website, so now we have a fourth sneaker to talk about. Construction-wise, this shoe seems pretty similar to the Space Hippie 1, except the midsole is a little bit different. The only other difference between this shoe and the other shoes in the collection is that for some reason, this shoe comes in two different colorways. The standard gray and orange colorway, and also a darker gray and neon green colorway. I'm not totally sure what the reason for that is, but I don't mind it. And at the end of the day, I think this shoe is going to be just like the other Space Hippies. I think both of these colorways are going to sell out. Continuing on to June 12th, we've got the Nike Kyrie 6 Neon Graffiti. This shoe is a primarily white Kyrie 6 that comes with some very colorful neon branding throughout the sneaker. The main colors that are featured on this shoe besides white are pink, blue, and yellow. Another cool detail is the translucent blue strap that covers up the midfoot of the shoe. And overall, it's not a bad looking sneaker. In fact, I like the fact that they decided to make the shoe a little bit more premium with a leather heel counter. It's fine. I don't think it's anything crazy. If you want to pick it up, great. If you don't, that's fine as well. But I don't think this shoe is going to sell out. Also releasing on the 12th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low in University Red. I love the fact that Nike is giving us some classic clean and simple dunk colorways. I feel like all these colorways that have released recently have been pretty solid and I'd rock any of them. I definitely think this colorway in particular is going to be very popular because it's such a solid colorway. Both red and white are very popular colors and I think a lot of people are stoked about this shoe. But other than colorway, there's not really any differences between this dunk and any of the previous collegiate dunks that have dropped over the last couple weeks. As you all know, dunks are back and I definitely think this shoe will sell out instantly. Then moving on to June 13th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Alternate Grape. I wish Jordan Brand would just give us the standard Grape Fives, whether it's the all-white pair or the black pair, I don't care, I miss the Grape Fives. This colorway is fine, I guess, it's a purple suede Air Jordan 5, and while I do really love the color purple, it just doesn't seem to work for me on this shoe. I don't know what it is, maybe it's just because I just love the standard Grape Fives and I want one of those, so I'm not into this colorway as much as I could have been, but at the end of the day, it's just not for me. I do think there will be a lot of people out there who will like the alternate Grape Air Jordan 5s, and because of that, I could see this shoe selling out. Next up, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Top 3. You know what? I've just never really been into top 3 colorways of Air Jordan sneakers. I feel like it's a weird concept, and it just isn't ever executed as well as it could have been. They take three of the classic colorways of that particular Jordan model, and they mash them all into one colorway. And while I think sometimes it can work, and when it's done in the What The iteration, where they take a bunch of different crazy colorways and make it just a nut shoe, on this shoe, it's just not different enough to look good. This top three Air Jordan 5 looks like it's almost good, but it's just not there yet. And I think the reason for that is that it kind of looks like a Fire Red 5, it kind of looks like a Black Metallic 5, it kind of looks like a Grape 5, but together it just kind of looks like a mess. I guess I'm being dramatic. It doesn't look like a mess, it just is not something that I want, and I just would have rather had the OG colorways. That said, 5s are still popular this year. It's a black Air Jordan 5, it's got Nike Air on the heel. I think it's gonna sell. Also releasing on the 13th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Zion. We've talked about this shoe before, and that's because this shoe was pushed back from last month. It's a decent looking 350 V2. I feel like I've been really apathetic about all the sneakers dropping on this day, but the shoe comes with a semi-translucent clear or light white midsole, accented by sort of a light brown static upper. It also has this darker brown stripe along the side of the shoe. It's definitely a solid Yeezy Boost 350 V2 colorway, and if you're looking for a good colorway that's very easy to rock, this is not a bad way to go. And being a good 350 V2 colorway, expect this shoe to sell out. And then rounding off the 13th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Quantum Basketball in the Barium colorway. As the name would suggest, this is the basketball variant of the Adidas Yeezy Quantum, and because of that, it has a TPU cage on the midfoot. The only real difference that I can tell between this basketball Yeezy and the previous basketball Yeezy Quantum is the colorway. The Barium colorway seems to be sort of a dark green, almost brown look, and overall, it's not bad, it just doesn't look as good as the original, at least in my opinion. I have no idea about the availability of this shoe. I would expect it to be more available than the previous pair, because the last one was almost impossible to get. This time around it should be a more widespread release, or at least I would hope. However, the one thing I do know is that because this shoe is a Yeezy Quantum Basketball, it will definitely sell out. Then dropping on June 15th, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 Low in the LeBron James colorway. The shoe comes in a primarily black and white makeup with a colorful LeBron James logo embroidered onto the heel. Other than that, from what I can tell, it's just a standard LeBron 17 Low. If you're looking for a pair of LeBron 17 Lows, great. You shouldn't have too hard of a time finding this pair because I don't see this pair selling out. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the sneaker releases in the first half of June 2020 and whether you're considering picking any of these sneakers up or whether you don't care about any of them or just which ones are your favorite. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.